You guys ever take a sick day from school? I'm pretty sure most of y'all have. And if you didn't, you're either lying or you were homeschooled. If I ever came down with a case of the flu or strep throat, obviously I would have to stay home from school. And I was not really allowed to do a whole lot of stuff while I was recovering. One of the few things I could do was watch television. My mom said if I had enough energy to play video games, I had enough energy to go to school. I'm not exactly sure how twiddling some sticks Ugh, don't say it like that. ...can indicate that I am completely faking my illness, but since I have no debate skills, I simply accepted that no games would be played that day, and instead, I should just be a television viewer. But what the hell should I watch? Typically, Nickelodeon would just air Spongebob. Something they still do today because that series has been single-handedly keeping the lights on at Nickelodeon. But sometimes, there would be dry spells with no Spongebob, instead airing their wide selection of child-friendly sitcoms. Why couldn't he be more child friendly? You gotta be ashamed of yourself, nigga. I was a peculiar child. I would get bored watching live action shows for extended periods of time. I needed bright, colorful cartoons to get me through the day. I could watch Disney Channel, but that channel had even more live action shows than Nick. Not to mention, that shit was for girls! Disney XD was the manly shit. Unfortunately, it was also a premium channel. And depending on how high my family's salary was in a given year, usually we would have to settle for basic cable. That left me with one channel left. The greatest place for wacky animated adventures. I'm talking about Cartoon Network, baby. This shit had a wide selection of classics. You could find Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Fuck America. Kids Next Door. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Dexter's Lab. Camp Laszlo. Ben 10. Secret Saturdays. And Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. All on that channel. I'll even throw in My Gym Partner's a Monkey because I feel like I'm the only one that even remembers watching it. Some new stuff was brewing as well. Stuff that would end up becoming classics in their own right. Chowder, The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, <laughs> Adventure Time, Regular Show, The Amazing World of Gumball, Mad, The Looney Tunes Show, a show that should have gotten more seasons. It was my comfort show. Uncle Grandpa. I know it's not everyone's favorite, but it was my favorite form of brain rot. Clarence was a great slice of life palate cleanser. I never cared for Steven Universe. I got through like half of the first season and got tired of constantly seeing like 80% of the characters crying about some random bullshit. Cartoon Network had an amazing roster of shows for a young kid in the early 2010s like myself. However, these shows would rarely air during school hours on weekdays and new episodes were usually reserved for the 5 to 7 p.m. time slot. This channel isn't going to air their best material when the majority of their audience is off at school learning about fractions and reading the cricket in Times Square. But they gotta throw a sick boys a bone, you know? So what was their solution? Canada! Fuck America. These hosers love producing slop for children. They were making this before the genre of slop even existed. So Canada had this channel called Teletoon, which had such a great relationship with Cartoon Network in the States that they would even eventually be rebranded as Cartoon Network. But Canadian. This relationship mostly consisted of the two channels importing and exporting their programming to each other. One of the good things to come out of this partnership was the Total Drama franchise coming to the States. Of course, Cartoon Network was aware of how good this show was, so they saved most of its airtime for the coveted evening time slot. I guess 16 was also successful enough to be an evening show? I don't know. I tried to watch it just so I could convince myself I was more mature than my age, not realizing that I did not yet relate to being a teenager, so it was just a boring ass show in my opinion. So what shows did air during my sick days? There was Garage Band. Who the fuck spells garage like this? Almost Naked Animals, which, oh shit, it wasn't actually from Teletoon, it was from YTV. You know what, fuck it, it's all the same, everything in Canada is the same. I sense a Quebecer just started burning an English dictionary and posting on Reddit about how they're the most oppressed people on earth. Sidekick, also a property from YTV. In terms of quality, these shows ranged from mediocre to Jesus, I promise I will start reading the Bible more often and stop watching Smosh, just please end my suffering. Of course, these shows are nothing compared to the quintessential Canadian slop. Johnny Tess would often run for entire school days on Cartoon Network. Like, this single show would have six-hour marathons. I don't know why. 
They could have just aired reruns from Ed, Ed and Eddie or something, but but nah, nah. You kids ought to be ashamed for missing out on an education. So fuck you. Guess who's got a head of fiery hair and a turbocharged backpack? I also just hated how this show looked, and honestly, that can be applied to most Canadian cartoons. A lot of Canadian cartoons, especially the slop that I watched, had a very distinct look where you could just tell they were Canadian. They had these really thick outlines, and they used cheap flash animation. I could forgive this art direction on shows like Total Drama because at least I liked some of the characters. Does Johnny Test have any likable characters? Johnny is a piece of shit, his sisters are a piece of shit, and Dookie is just child-friendly Brian Griffin. <laughs> Side characters like Bling Bling Boy, Machiavelli. and Mr. Black and Mr. White. Why are you police officers? I blew up Malaysia. Are probably the only likable characters from this show. Now, they're only recurring characters, by the way, so you can imagine my disappointment seeing that the 10th consecutive episode of Johnny Test was about to air, hoping that at least one of these guys will show up to make the episode somewhat entertaining, only to see Gil next door. This guy definitely got up to devious shit on kick. If you've seen four different episodes of Johnny Test, you've essentially seen the entire series. The writers of the show reuse so many fucking ideas that it becomes essentially a chore just to watch it. So Canada basically gave us one good show and packaged it with slop. Now look, I'm not trying to dunk on Canada or anything. I'm sure one or two Canadians are subscribed to me. By the way, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I just think the country produced content that made having strep throat feel just a little bit worse. But this was in no way meant to be a diss to Canadians as a whole. I respect Canadians, even the ones from Saskatoon. Canadians, Quebecers. If it's any consolation, we gave you 12 ounce mouse, which I guess makes us even. Nope. Or bank robbery. You robbed a bank. Hell yeah.